Hi. So today I want to give a little bit of background information on the recipients of foreign aid and also on the donors of foreign aid. Who gives and who receives? Okay, here we have some data from Gapminder World on aid to recipient countries. In particular, on the vertical axis, we have the amount of aid received per person. Now this is Official Development Assistance, ODA. So official means this is aid coming from governments. This does not include private aid. Although the aid is coming from governments, it may be going to non-government organizations, to private organizations and charities and nonprofits in the recipient countries. It's also development assistance. So in particular, th this does not, does not include military aid. On the horizontal axis, we have GDP per capita. Now the first thing to note about this graph is there's no relationship whatsoever between the amount of aid received per person and GDP per capita. So you might have expected poor, poor, poor countries, countries down here, you might have expected them to receive a lot more money per capita than richer countries, but in fact that's not the case. So here is Congo, which receives, which has an income of about $350 per year, has a aid of $19 per year. Here is Liberia, has an income a little bit more, $415 per year, has aid of $185 per year, so a substantial fraction of their income comes from aid. But now look over here, this is Trinidad and Tobago, they have a GDP per capita of $18,000 and uh, aid of $16 per person. So Trinidad and Tobago are getting almost as much as the Congo, despite the fact that they are, what, some 50 times as uh, wealthy as in the Congo. You know, here is uh, Barbados. Okay, Barbados, pretty nice place to live. $17,000 in GDP per capita. They're getting $71 per person uh, in aid, which is a little bit more than they're getting in Burundi, which has an income per capita of about $450. The really uh, big receivers of aid, and notice here, by the way, that uh, this is $10. The, we have a ratio scale. So it's going from $1 per person, $10 per person, $100, $1,000. So up here, they're getting $1,000 per person. This is Palau. Let's see, this is the Marshall Islands. And over here is Micronesia. So what's going on? Why are they getting $1,000 per person despite having relatively high GDP per capita? Well, the basic story is, in the technical terms, these are associated states with the United States. And they are receiving a lot of money in order that we can put military bases on these Pacific islands. Now remember, this is not military aid. Nevertheless, it is aid in pursuit of a military objective. Uh, here's another example of that. Here is Iraq, and here is Afghanistan. Now, uh, all of this, this aid, by the way, I should point out, this is aid from all countries, uh, but clearly here we're talking mostly about the United States. So Iraq, uh, again, this is not, does not include military aid, but it's aid in pursuit of a military objective. By the way, the circles here are proportional to the total amount of aid. So when I click on the circle, if you look down in the bottom right, you can see that Iraq is receiving $9.7 billion worth of aid. Uh, Afghanistan over here is receiving uh, $4 billion worth of aid. Where's that circle? Let's get it back. There it is. Okay, there we go. $4.13 billion worth of aid. This is worth bearing in mind when we talk about the effectiveness of aid. Often we think when we're talking about effectiveness that we mean development or growth. As we'll see later, aid hasn't been terribly effective in that regard. But we also have to remember that a lot of aid is given for reasons other than growth. You know, here we're giving aid for military-like reasons, even when it's not military aid. Perhaps aid has been more successful on those grounds than on more standard, you know, economic welfare grounds. A couple other points to see in this graph. Here's China getting about a dollar per person. Here's India also getting about a dollar per person. Uh, not very much, in other words, even given the fact that there's lots of people in China and India, uh, they're not getting a lot of foreign aid. Certainly, China and India have done extremely well in terms of growth rates in recent years, and clearly this has not been due to foreign aid. Foreign aid is just too, too small to even uh, 
uh, have any ex ex explanatory power on why these countries are growing. One more point, we have increased the amount of aid. So if we go back, take a look at where the bubbles are here. This is a little bit rough. Let's go back, say, to 1965. Let's do that more slowly. You see most of them are going down, OK? There we go, particularly in the 1970s, they're going down, 1960, 1965, going down. So here's 1965. Again, notice that there's no relationship between aid received per person, aid per capita, and income per capita. Uh, what we do see in 1965 is that we're, we were giving less. It's a little bit hard to make out with this uh, graph, but basically over the past uh, uh, 40 years or so, we've tripled the amount of foreign aid. That's still not a huge amount, uh, you know, a small proportion of developing countries' GDP. But over the years, you know, giving this amount of aid every year, the total amount has been quite substantial. Now here we have some data on some of the major donor countries. So now on the vertical axis, we have aid given per person. This is aid given per person in the donor country. And on the horizontal axis, GDP per capita. So here's the United States, which gives about $72 per person. Because the US economy is a large economy, that means about $19 billion in total. Here's Japan, which gives a little bit less, $60 per person, $9 billion in total. Uh, Spain gives about the same, a little bit more, 114. Here is Italy, 67. New Zealand at 76. Greece at 45. And Portugal. The real outliers here are Norway, which gives $787 per person, and Luxembourg, which gives over $800 per person. Do bear in mind that this is official development assistance, so this is from governments, does not include private uh, donations. Here's uh, Denmark, and there's uh, Sweden. This is, by the way, OECD uh, data, developed country data. Doesn't include all donors in the world. There are a few others which are worth mentioning. So Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates, they give about $2 billion a year, mostly to other Muslim countries. That's about $2 billion. That's about the same as uh, Canada. Uh, China has been giving more in recent years, still fairly small, though, about $500 uh, million. It's important to understand when evaluating the amount of aid that not all of it is given in cash by any means. So for example, suppose that the State Department pays for an economics expert to go to Nairobi, Kenya, and give some advice. Should the expert fly to Kenya, stays in a nice hotel, has some nice meals, takes a little tour, gives some advice, flies home. The cost of the expert's time and the flight and so forth, this is all paid for by the State Department, and it counts as U.S. aid even despite the fact that the value of the aid to the Kenyans might be considerably less than the cost. Had the Kenyans been given cash, they might have chosen it to spend it somewhere else. This is sort of like the deadweight loss of Christmas. When people give gifts, the gifts tend to be worth less to the recipient than they cost the receiver. More generally, a lot of aid, most of it, used to be tied. So for example, grants and loans used to be given to countries on the condition that those grants be spent on exports, exports from the donor countries. Now, beginning around uh, 19, late 1990s, 2000, 2001, however, uh, the amount of tied aid has actually gone down considerably. So most aid, with the exception of technical assistance and food, is now untied. Most grants and loans, in fact, are now untied. This is rather surprising. It's easy to see why a country would want to tie uh, aid to its exports. It's a way of doing well while doing good. It's a way that politicians can benefit some local constituents at the same time as giving foreign aid. So the fact that most of the European countries, 80, 90 percent of the aid that they give is now untied is rather surprising. Even in the, in the United States, which has been one of the worst uh, performers on tied aid, has tend to tie its aid quite closely uh, to U.S. interests. Uh, most U.S. aid is now also untied. A uh, couple of exceptions, food aid is still tied, technical assistance is still tied, but grants and loans, most of it today is untied. And that's probably increased the efficiency of the aid system in recent years. Thanks.